in the name of Jesus, if there's any struggling God, help and encourage and bless the struggling God. Help us to see we can walk as more than conquerors in you who loved us. And God, you're doing great things in this area. I thank you for it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask it. In Jesus' name, let's everybody say amen. 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 All right. Now, just recently I was reading an article about the head of Apple. I, the Lord had spoken to me several days ago. I knew what I was going to preach, unless the Lord changed it, which he does every so often, But uh, and teach tonight. But it was on time management. I read this. He said, our company success has to do with time management. Benjamin Franklin made one of my favorite quotes that's so true. How many of you like Ben Franklin? Hallelujah. I know where you like Ben Franklin. On a portrait in your wallet. Hallelujah. I know exactly where you like Ben Franklin. But he said a lot of good things as well. Hallelujah. He says, Does thou love life? Then do not squander time. For that is the stuff life is made of. I'll read it again. Does thou love life? Then do not squander time. For that is the stuff that... Life is made of time is like money. It must be budgeted in order not to be wasted. Everybody who's ever dealt with money for any length of time, you know if you don't budget it, you spend it. Right. People live to the realm of their spending. We had wonderful friends of ours one time. Um, he had an incredible job. She had a better job. They were making way into the six figures. Way into the six figures. They wanted to meet with me after church. This was not at this church. They wanted to meet with me after church one, one night. And I said, well, sure. And they said, we're in trouble. He said, I, we've uh, run up our company credit card. We can't pay it off. We're in debt. We can't pay anything. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I know about how much you make, and I know about how much you make. And it was, it was probably about, oh, I mean, it's not incredible money, but about $140,000, $150,000 a year. And this was 15, 20 years ago. And uh, let's say 15, so money was worth more then. And uh, it's probably the equivalent of a couple hundred grand, 175, 200 grand today, which is, uh, I mean, it's not like professional baseball player money, but I think everybody in this room would like to make that. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's things I don't know about. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a... You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm thinking, how did y'all get into this? And so as I began to talk to them, they just said, well, we didn't know how to budget. And so you spend, and I had heard this my whole life, that you spend what you make. If you got it, when you normally wouldn't go out to eat, you'll go out to eat. And if you if you got it, you'll spend. When you, you know, you might go four years, six years, and, and change in the living room. Well, you just do it. And so you spend up to your but to to the amount of money you've got unless it is budgeted you spend to that amount and so it is with time thank you so your money what's that old saying master your money or it'll master you you spend to the amount that you make and this is true I, and I've known this throughout my whole life um, one time my father, he was a house builder, among other things, and he built this beautiful home in Jonesboro, Georgia, right by Lake Spivey. And uh, there was a professional basketball player in the 80s, in the 80s, and he had signed a, a three-year contract making $875,000 a year. Now that's pretty good money right there. $875,000 a year. He could not get the loan to buy this house. Because he had spent, he bought mom a house, bought dad a house, bought sister a car, others a car, he had a house here, and so he spent to what he made. Recently, a former Atlanta Hawks player, um, he just signed with the Los Angeles somebody, Clippers maybe, I don't keep up with it that much, but uh, he just signed for $6.2 million, and if I'm not mistaken, or some, maybe he signed for $1.3 million, but he was making $6.2 million from his previous team. They waived him, something like that. Anyhow, it turns out he was making $6.2 million. He said, well, you know, we're going to have to scrimp and save. You know, i got a family, but we're going to figure out a way to make it somehow. And he wasn't joking. But, because he was used to making $13.3 million a year, or whatever his last contract was. 
And so he was down to 6.2 or 3, and y'all can check the figures, you know. He was down to 6.2 or 3 million, and he was like, you know, we'll figure out a way to make it. we got to figure out a way to make it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if I made that in one year, <laughs> uh, it's probably do work for Jesus full time, you know. <laughs> it's like, you know, you, uh, but anyhow, so... Money is like that. We all know that. Time is like that as well. That your time, if you don't master your time, that it will get away from you and uh, you'll use all your time. Now, in today's society, we have the opportunity for distractions like we have never had before. Time wasters like we have never had before. Um, This is a wonderful device but it can be used as a horrific time waster. I have counseled students at IBC and uh, that uh, would, would just get addicted to YouTube. They say that there's tens of thousands of people all over America that are addicted to the computer. iPads, iPods, uh, other forms of electronics. They are intrinsically addictive. Just the fact that there's electronics and that type of thing. There's been much science about that. And so you end up wasting your life. You know, God creates sunrises, sunsets, supermoons, mountains, trees, birds. And you're just sitting there, just glued. And trying to figure out what the weather is in Frankfurt, Germany or something. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just, somebody sends you a video, you watch 15 consecutive videos of cute dogs, you know, just, and all of this, and uh, there's, you know, and so let your moderation be known unto all men, you know, none of these things are necessarily intrinsically wrong, but overall it can end up as a huge time waster. I know people that are addicted to Facebook, and uh, they just just live by Facebook, and you know, we're supposed to say man lives not uh, by bread alone, but by every word of God. They live by Facebook. Everything that's posted on Facebook. Oh, oh. People are like that by the millions. And uh, maybe not that severe by the millions, but people are addicted to computers by the millions. And so this leads to wasting of time. And you can waste time not just on computers. You can waste time on any number of things. And we're going to look at that. Uh, tonight. All of us are allotted a certain number of days. In 70 years, now I misdid that. That is, we have uh, 2,208,986,640 seconds. Seconds, not days. That's all the seconds that you have. I mean, that's just terrible. It's like, i got to get busy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Seconds. That is... Uh, 31,556,952 seconds per year. That's 3,600 seconds an hour or 86,400 seconds in a day. If the average human, if they live to 70, they live 25,550 days. Some here have exceeded that. Some have not reached that yet. I remember I went to uh, hear Sanford Bishop one time, and at the end of his speaking, He quoted something by Dr. Benjamin Mays, and it really stuck with me. It says, I have only just a minute, it's on your sheet here, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. A minute, and that's how everything we have coming at us. Every, every, each one of us have the exact same amount of time in the course of a day. And so this is time management. What Benjamin Mays was trying to communicate to us is that all of us, none of us ask for the next minute, but we have it. What is the most wise thing we can do with that minute? The Bible says so much about time, so where do we start? Okay, there's 168 hours in a week. We'll get back to that. Matthew 6.33 says this, But seek ye first, we could all say this together, we could <coughs> seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Just as God owns all our possessions, so He owns our time as well. Matthew 6.21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is our time treasure? 
What does it say about you and your love for God? If you don't pray and read the Bible, but you play a video game for two hours a day, well, what's that saying about your time treasure? If you, uh, if you don't seek the Lord, make an effort to come to church, but you can uh, watch uh, a couple of Hollywood videos every week. Well, you have to be very careful. If you complain about church being too long, but you don't complain about football games being too long, you have to be careful. Where's your time treasure at? And so we have to always be careful that we don't allow Satan in this world to switch the price tags in our heart. And... Uh, that type thing. So, uh, and it goes into so many things, not just time, effort, energy, all of those things. If we'll do effort, energy for other things, we do that for Jesus Christ. God most of, must have thought time meant something because He created it and told how much time it took to create everything in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis 1.14, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So that is where time started. God even uses time in prophecy. You've got seven years of tribulation, three and a half years, 1,290 days, 45 days, on and on and so forth. So God does care about time. He mentioned it again in Genesis chapter 1. One amazing thing is, is wasted time can never be regained. Wasted time can never be regained. You can't go back and say, I wish I'd have done that yesterday. You, you don't have it. Wasted time cannot be regained. One well, of the fascinating things uh, about time management is really there should be no excuses. We should just do what we know to do. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Paul really starts to drive home this about time. And I always find it unique when I begin to teach like this. There was an old saying years ago, y'all may or may not have heard it. I've probably said it here. You may have said it too. You'd say, now that preacher, he done quit from preaching and going to meddling. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, no, the Word of God does meddle with every part of our life. Hallelujah. So Romans 13, verse 11 says, and that knowing the time, let's say the time, the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It is funny that a television will put you to a semi-sleep state. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. That's time. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering. That's just laying around not doing anything. In wantonness. Not in strife and envy. Not getting all full of strife and envy. You've got better things to spend your time on than all these other things. We have a work to do. I remember one time, one thing I used to do to the students at Indiana Bible College is I would bring a book, now you'll have to hear me out on this, don't take any conclusions till you hear me out, written by the founder of the Church of Satan. His name was Anton Sandsdor LeVay. And he wrote a book called The Devil's Notebook. And in that he talks about, he's talking about time. And he says this about television, he says, now look, television's always been the devil's instrument, the, uh, the uh, inaugural uh, thing, uh, uh, in 1939, was on the second highest holy day of the satanic calendar, Walpurg's night, all this kind of stuff. He said it used to be crosses, churches that dictated what people were supposed to wear, think, now it's television, there's people what they're supposed to wear, what to think, and all this. But he goes through all of this, and he gets to the end. I've read this, and, and I've seen people's lives radically change reading this. I didn't bring it tonight. I didn't, really didn't want to. But um, at the end, he says, now! He says, fellow Satan, he said, turn the television set to the corner. Or better yet, get rid of it all together. He said, because we have a work to do, lest we be ensnared by our own infernal devices. Now, think about that. He's like, we don't have time for that stuff. We've got to win the world for the devil. Now, I think the children of this world and their generation sometimes are wiser than the children of light. Hallelujah. What does that say about you and I? Amen. Get rid of some of this stuff. 
Praise God. we got work to do. We want to see this world one for Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you, if you'll wake up one morning and say, well, where did America go? It's the frog in the kettle syndrome. That uh, it doesn't happen. You know, you throw a frog in boiling water, he jumps out. You throw him in tepid water with the, the oven on, eventually you boil the frog. Because it happens gradually. And so that's how Satan's working in the United States of America. Now you say, I've said all that to say this about time management. Man, we don't have time to play around. You know, we don't have time to spend three, four, five, six hours. We need to be in intercession. We need to be praying. We need to be talking in tongues. And uh, because Satan goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, he's not resting. Hallelujah. So it's time for us to really use our time that Jesus has given us for Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. John chapter 9, verse number 4. I pray I didn't make anybody uncomfortable with that. But it's all true. Hallelujah. And the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. So we have to preach the truth here. Praise the Lord. And John 9, 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it, was, while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work time. We've got to work while it's day because time is slipping away. Hallelujah. And uh, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Time. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Proverbs 20, verse 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. I say that because sometimes young people uh, get to sleeping too much. They sleep 10, 12 hours a day. I thank the Lord my dad would come and grab me by the foot and drag me out of bed. He would never let me sleep too long. Hallelujah. And uh, even when I wasn't living for Jesus Christ... and. Maybe I'd stayed out really late the night before. I know what it's like to go all night with no sleep. I know and work all the next day, sleep an hour, two hours. Then you go to college. You might be getting a couple hours sleep a night. You go to IVC. It's a testimony in sleep deprivation. But they all live by that scripture. Hallelujah. Love not sleep. Hallelujah. You can like it. Work hard. Your sleep will be sweet. But don't love sleep. Can you say amen? Amen. Hey, I didn't write it. I just read it. Hallelujah. It's in the Bible. Praise God. Self-motivation is a scriptural principle. This is all type of time management. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 6. Wish we had time to go into just deep specifics of this. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. A sluggard could be defined as one who wastes time of a few different definitions you could have for a slugger at the end of the day it boils down to they waste time they're not making effective use of their time go to the ant thou slugger consider her ways Solomon says think about the ant and you'll be smart which having no guide overseer or ruler provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Time waster. When wilt thou, a lazy person, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. The Bible likens it to somebody, a door turning on its hinges. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want is an armed man. So shall thy poverty come as one that travels. Somebody that goes on vacations all the time. They're going to be in poverty. And as an armed man. You know, robbers usually are in jail. They're not really uh, doing a lot. Have y'all seen about the revival in Angola State Prison in Louisiana? I think that's one of the neatest things of our time. Angola State Prison in Louisiana used to have a minimum of 20 murders every year. Horrible. And they started getting Christianity in there. It's been years since they've had a murder. People say they love to go to work there now because all the prisoners by and large are Christian. And it was horrible. And they got Christianity in there. And it just shows how, how great Christianity is. But anyhow, getting back to time management. Um, we need to look at what's the best use of a particular moment and use it. We don't have time for bitterness. We don't have time for anger. We don't have time for backbiting. We, we should use our time in much better ways. 
Also, we never know when our last moment will be. We had a young lady in our youth group one time. She was having problems with her with her husband. And uh, her, she told her husband, she says, I hate you! And he went out. She was in our youth group. She went out, and he went out, excuse me, got on his motorcycle, drove, had a wreck, and died. For years, she may still, I don't know. I know we talked with her years later. She was still living with the, with the guilt that the last thing that she ever said was, I hate you. Man, we don't have time for that kind of stuff as Christians. That's what I try to make last word ever say to Sister Walker. I love you because I want to make sure that doesn't happen because none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed the rest of tonight. So time, let's everybody say time. Use it right in the power of the Holy Ghost. Every time has within it the seeds of apostolic revival. Every moment. I mean, you're working and you just say, God, I'm asking you to start revival in this city. God, I need my family saved. God, every moment has within it the seeds of revival. Every moment used wisely. Every moment has in it the seeds of a changed life. That book by Sheldon, What Would Jesus Do? Or In His Steps was the name of the book. It's where What Would Jesus Do came from. Really brings that, that home in that book. That every moment should be used for Jesus Christ. Proverbs 19.15 Slothfulness or laziness or time wasters casteth into a deep sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Value every moment. As the Word of God says, the king's business requires haste. Treasure time and use it for God. You and I, we will have to answer for wasted time. Don't compare yourself amongst yourselves. Just give all to Jesus. James 4.14 says this, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. I was talking with somebody recently that uh, is the head of another apostolic organization and they're related to one of the, the former heads of the United Pentecostal Church. And they said, we just want to tell you we're the head of this organization and the life's like a vapor. Said that guy's widow is just sitting at a church somewhere and said he worked his whole life to be the head of the United Pentecostal Church. And then it was over. It was over. So we just need to make sure, and there's nothing wrong with being the head of the United Pentecostal Church, but we have to make sure we're work, what we're working on is things of value. Things that are life-changing. In the graveyard, talking about time management, in the nursing home sometimes, are books that were never written. Songs that were never sung or composed. Worship that was never given. Bible studies that were never taught. Prayers that were never prayed. In the graveyard. You don't want to get to the end of your life and have regrets. You want to go running through those pearly gates. Saying, I did everything I could for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. But then he begins to say, here's when the day of salvation is. Behold, now is the accepted time. When should you come to Jesus? Now. Behold, when's the day of salvation? Tomorrow, the next day? No, now is the day of salvation. you got to make your calling and election sure today. Now. Because we're not assured of any other time. I want my heart to be right with Jesus all the time. Hallelujah. Because now is the accepted time. Some fret over yesterday. They have regrets. Forget yesterday's disappointments and go on for Jesus. I've known people, they said, man, if I'd have made this decision in my life, if I'd have just went to college, if I'd just married that one, if I'd have just done this, if I'd have just got this degree, if I'd have just got this, if I'd have just took that job, stop. Because all you got is today. And so you can't beat yourself up over yesterdays. You got today, live for Jesus today, 
They couldn't figure out David, a man after God's own heart. Well, well why? the baby's dead, David. Why are you eating now? He said, because I couldn't change it and I can't change it. I'll go to it. It's not coming back to me. i got to go on with life. Even when Joab had killed a mesa and his guts fell out, but he was still alive, it stopped the entire army. Finally, somebody had the wherewithal to drag a mesa. He was dying anyhow, cover him with a sheet, blow the trumpet, and say, let's win the battle. Sometimes the mess you've made out of your life, you ask God to forgive you, you try to get out of it, and then you just got to drag it to the side, don't sit there and stare at it, and go on for Jesus. People might sit there and stare at it. That's on them. Stuff that's under the blood. You can't let Jesus take care of you know, Let Jesus take care of that. You can't let uh, those things be uh, brought back out from under the blood. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So forget yesterday's disappointments and go on for Jesus. Quit questioning why you quit college. Quit questioning why you did these things. Just stop. You got today. You can be a great soul winner today. You can be a great Christian today. You can be a great apostolic today. You can win people to God today. God may give you a vision for a business to start today. Because it seems like apostolics and other Christian groups may not be able to work for the government forever if it keeps going on the way it's going on. So you might have a, a vision for, for a business today or what you're supposed to do today. Something like that. Just leaving those things which were behind, as Paul said. We press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of, of God in Christ Jesus. Life's too short to spend on gossiping. Just think the breath you spent on that, you could have spent it in a praise to Jesus or a prayer for somebody lost. Could you imagine when you're sitting there breathing your last, you could have had another prayer on your lips instead of gossiping. Grudges, backbiting, hatred, regret, bitterness. Live for God great right now. It's all we have is the present of the present. God's gift of the present. I want to tell everybody I know I love them now. Because I may not have tomorrow. They may not have tomorrow. I mean, I want to uh, just... We used to have a dear sister in our church. She's going to be with the Lord. She'd say, give me my roses now, not at my funeral. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I know what she meant. We have the present of the present. We can worship God. This place can come unglued in the Holy Ghost. Because we have the present. And that's all we've got. Well, I'll praise God tomorrow. Man, I'm going to get right with Jesus tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And you, time travel has not been perfected yet, so you can't go back and grab yesterday. So all you got is the right now. Live for Jesus in the right now. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Alright, if you sleep one less hour per night, you can add 2.92 years of productivity to your life. This is not to people with young children that's only sleeping 3-4 hours a night. It's somebody who's getting a bunch of sleep. Work smarter, not necessarily harder, but work hard, yes. I mean, you've got to put your shoulder to the wheel. God does not like, he calls them slothful, sluggards. You've got to be a hard worker in the kingdom of God. you just got to. Multitask. Do two things at one. Once if you can. Make each moment a God moment. Benefiting His kingdom. Enjoying Him. Teaching for Him. You'll be glad you did. Every moment. Instead of looking at the negative, look at God. I mean, look at Jesus died for you. We can either complain or we can worship Jesus. Hallelujah. So, uh, Give 24 hours to Jesus on Sunday. I'm going to go back to that 168 hours in a week. Sleep seven hours per night the other six nights. If you can. I know some can't survive on that. Some don't think they can survive on it, but can. That's 42 hours. Work 60 hours a week. Spend two hours a day in prayer and Bible study and working for Jesus. That's 12 hours. Nine hours a week in personal time, grooming, exercise, waking up. 12 hours a week eating preparing to eat all this. Still got nine hours a week to do other things. Now if you got children, we all understand that. 
Now, of course, if you got children, but you can still organize your time and your life for Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, too, about prayer. Is in prayer, pray effectually and fervently. I've known some people that said, I'm going to pray two hours a day, and for a year or two, they were spiritual powerhouses. But what ends up happening in that two hours, all of a sudden they're down to an hour 45 of prayer and 15 minutes of mind wondering. Then they get down to an hour and 40 minutes and 20 minutes of mind wondering and thinking and all this kind of stuff about different things. And meditating upon the Lord is good, but I'm not talking about all this. All of a sudden they're down to an hour and 15 minutes after five years. And then they're down to an hour. Now they're still telling everybody they pray two hours a day. Then they're down to an hour, and then they're down to 40 minutes. And they spend the rest of the time just thinking, doing, trying to plan the day, uh, having thoughts, just anything, emotions, uh, any number of things. So make sure your prayer life is just fervent and effectual. Fervent and effectual. And it's okay to say, I'm going to pray an hour a day, two hours a day, three hours a day. It's okay to say that, but make sure you're really doing that. And not saying you're praying two hours a day and praying 40 minutes a day and an hour and 20 minutes a day on other things. Can you say amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. What we don't have time for, and I'm coming to a close, vanities, the Bible calls it. Let's everybody say vanities. Yeah. Tom Wolf wrote that book, The Bonfire of the Vanities. Talk about Hollywood. Hollywood's vain. Pop culture's vain. Beauty's vain. Secular movies, sports, surfing the internet mindlessly. And all of that, you know, may have a place done in moderation. But you've got to be very careful with it. Being obsessed with ourselves. Gossip again. Back by negativity. Slander, depression, discouragement, regret, boasting. All these things. Time wasters that waste that valuable gift that God has given to us. Life to serve Him. The main thing in our life is to keep the main thing the main thing. And you can look at somebody's time treasure and their wallet and tell what they love. If somebody was to, to look at your time, so I work eight hours. We understand that. But that's still a love for Jesus because you're taking care of your family. You're giving to the kingdom of God. That work is for the kingdom of God. So that's, you know, that's a good thing. But, you know, if somebody in, you know, I, I'm praying 15, 10 minutes a day and I'm on the computer four hours a day, then you got issues. Hallelujah. That's called a vanity. And... Uh, the world as we know it because of the rise of electronic media is filled with vanities. Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. The vanities basically means worthless things. In the original it means lighter than air. It's just that it doesn't mean anything. So they provoke me to anger with their vanities. It's those kind of scriptures that I'm talking about. People that don't worship God, but they'll get all excited during the football game or the basketball game. They'll go crazy at a concert, but they won't go crazy for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are prayers that have not been prayed because of vanities. There's Bible studies that have not been taught because of vanities. The Bible says, I hate vain thoughts. Let's apply our hearts unto wisdom. Church, I'm just talking a little bit. I felt led by the Holy Ghost to talk about apostolic time management. If we're ever going to see the Holy Ghost apostolic revival God wants to see in this area, it's not just going to happen by accident. It's not just going to happen. Uh, it's going to happen because people were concerted and they began to make the priorities of life the real priorities of life. They'll make Jesus the, the first thing in their life. They'll make worship. They'll make teaching their children the, the first priorities of life. They'll make worshiping God a tremendous, living by the Word of God an awesome priority in their life. And they'll put other things down. They will suppress the vanities in their life. 
Satan has thrown all kinds of stuff out there. Why? Because he reads the scripture and it says that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the glory of the former house. But we shall receive the former and the latter rain in one month. And he's scared to death. Hallelujah. I want to be a part of what God's doing. I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to see Jesus work in this end time hour like he has never worked in this end time hour. Hallelujah. Satan works constantly. Let's do our best for Jesus. Apostolic time management. Organization is okay. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Why don't you pray for the person next to you. Ask God to lose great things into their life. And that we'll keep the main thing, the main thing in our life. God, I glorify you. I love you, Lord Jesus Christ.